So Troy looks out in the parking lot and he's like, what's with you Chevy guys parking all sideways and crazy like this, taking up 17 parking spaces? And I said, well, it's because we can, therefore we do. So that being said, good day to you guys. Hello and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. This is a 2006 sideways parked Chevrolet Silver Rado. It's a 2500. Gas powered, uh, sounds like a six liter. It has approximately, holy smokes, look at that. 410,731 miles on the odometer. That is insanity. Good job, Chevy Silverado. Anyway, uh, this thing is here because my guy would like to have the transmission fluid exchanged. Um, at 400K, I'm, I'm actually a little nervous. So let me take this thing out on the road real quick, make sure it shifts. Make sure the trans feels good, and if the fluid is in acceptable condition, uh, I'll go ahead and service it. But if not, uh, I may have to decline trans service repairs on this uh, particular vehicle. I don't think I will. I think it's got a, a 4L80 trans in it, but I just want to make sure I don't destroy this thing uh, while trying to make it live a little bit longer. So, stay tuned, because this is going to be a very good video. Got to do like a 12 point turn through the parking lot because some other Silverado guy decided to just park in the middle of the road all sideways and stuff. Not nobody can get in and out. Oh no. We're just going to go ahead and do a quick trip over the bridge. Looks like there's a train there so we're going to start with going right. Hopefully it's gone by the time I uh, come back around the other side. We shall see. Anyway, it has first gear shift. I think that's second. Well, it shifts, this is good. Up and over the bridge, more steam. Yeah, she's shifting. Next gear. All right, there's fourth, that's OD. Okay, it has all of its gears, this is good. Looks like I'm gonna be waiting at the train because it's still parked. Hmm. You know what? I think we'll just flip around, do a UE right here, and uh, go over the train again. It's probably best. Commencing U turn now. Sideways. Third gear, good. Now we can see right here, it does have a service engine soon indicator that is indicated. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull up those trouble codes on the scan tool before touching this transmission because if there's like a, a P700 code or anything involving the transmission, uh, I won't be able to uh, do the service. These super high mileage trans services can be kind of risky and I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to break the vehicle. So if there's anything wrong with the trans or if the fluid is just destroyed, smoked in it, we're not gonna really want to do any kind of work to it. I think it's always kind of best to just err slightly on the safer side uh, when it comes to these super high mileage vehicles. If this was at like 200K, it wouldn't bother me so much, but nearly half a million miles, that's, that's up there a little bit. Definitely got your money's worth out of it, that's for sure. I heard the train. Watch, it'll be gone by the time we get back. So I don't know what's going on today, but traffic has been doing some insane things. I was uh, on my way to work this morning, and uh, I was on a three lane, it was a six lane road, you know, surface street. So we got three lanes one direction, three lanes the other direction. And uh, I was in front of a Walmart, and there was a turning lane to the right, and you know, cars were making their right hand turn into the Walmart parking lot. And uh, these two Volvos of all vehicles showed up, one yellow Volvo and one white Volvo. They pulled up to the right in the right side turning lane. They cut in between, they proceeded through the intersection, cut in between the cars that were coming from the other side, making a left into that same parking lot. They just kind of drove through like they were in the middle of a car chase, cut off a bunch of people, blew right through the red light, and then kept on going. And then the weird part was, is I saw both of them down the street at the next red light. So I have no idea what I witnessed and why I witnessed it, but I straight saw two cars just do some Grand Theft Auto style maneuvering, uh, only to return to normal gameplay mode and just sit there at the next red light. Uh, so something, there's something in the air, something in the water, I don't know, 
Uh, maybe it was like a Volvo race or something that was taking place this morning. Uh, but either way, that kind of threw me back a little bit because I've never seen Volvos uh, run red lights in such a fashion before. Anyway, story time's over. Let's go ahead and get this thing uh, into the shop, up onto the rack. We're gonna inspect uh, the underneath carriage and we're gonna check these trouble codes right here for uh, any kind of transmission related issues. I bet all we're gonna find is like a P0455 emission system leak. Bet, but we'll see. We don't know until we know. And I also don't know if these mirrors are gonna clear the rack right here. It's, it's pretty close, isn't it? You gonna make it? Yeah, buddy, we're gonna make it. Look at that. That's nice. We got it. All right, all the way forward. Center of gravity at the driver. We're good to go. Parking the auto. Let's go fetch the scan tool, get connected, and see uh, see what's going on here. Oh no, I'm stuck. Now, there is one other issue that I heard about on this truck, and uh, that is that the rear rear brakes were recently done on it. And uh, well, keep in mind, uh, this is uh, similar to my Silverado where the rear axle has a full floating axle, and it's got an axle seal just uh, the same way the same way the rear hub assembly was on, a, on my Silverado. Made a video about that a few weeks ago, but either way, it's got two bearings in the rear hubs instead of just the one single bearing, and the actual drive axle within the axle tube is free floating, meaning it doesn't bear any weight. Uh, that being said, uh, there was a rear brake job recently done on it, and it appears that one of the rear seals is leaking, and I'm gonna take a look at that and see if I can't remedy that also. Uh, there's a slight possibility that the nut that holds the bearing and hub onto the axle tube itself is not run down all the way and that the actual seal uh, has not fully seated. Uh, and I know this because I've done similar things before myself. So I'm going to take a look at that and see if we can't make this thing stop, uh, stop leaking back there. And I was way wrong. We do not have an EVAP system leak. We got a P0101 mass airflow circuit sensor out of range, a P171 fuel system lean, 174 lean bank 2 both knock sensors are not happy those are under the intake manifold and oh, there's the 446 vent control problem with the evap so yeah this thing's got some other stuff going on uh let's just hop into the tcm real quick and make sure that there's no p700 hanging out or any kind of uh, transmission shifting trouble codes if there is not we can go ahead and recheck or we can check the fluid level and condition, and if all that looks uh, copacetic, we can proceed with the services. And I don't see, there's no TCM to get into. So we're good to go here regarding the trouble codes, I think. Yes. Yeah, there's nothing in trans here. Okay, let us go ahead and pop it in the hood, pull the dipstick, and uh, take a look at the trans fluid condition, and then we'll go from there. Oh, can't fit, mirror's too big. Let's see here. There we go. Hello, six liter. Let's go ahead and get some light on the subject here. Overhead drop lights are the best. Powering on. Okay, transmission, where are you? Da, 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 way back there. Come on out, trans dipstick tube. What do we get? Oh, that's pretty dark. Yeah, that's pretty dark. It's not black, but yeah, that's nasty. Hmm. What do you guys think? Should I service it or should I not service it? Ye tough call, isn't it? I'm gonna service it. Let's do it. See what happens. It's either gonna work or it's not. So let's get the funnel in here. I'm gonna throw my uh, my BG cleaner in the tube there. We're gonna let this thing run while we set the rack. I'll set the machine up, we'll connect it. We'll, uh, we'll get the fluid pumping through the sight glass on the machine. Ah, we've had a restock in the vault of viscosity. Here we go. Good. That's my cleaner and my conditioner. But anyway, as I was saying, uh, while we're doing all that other work, this cleaner is gonna be doing its work, so we're actually doing more than one thing at, at one time for efficiency and then we'll get that machine connected and, uh, and see how this is going to go installing quick clean solution now 
We just pour it in. We'll let gravity do the work for us. Oh no, you don't. Get back up there. Yeah. Okay, we've got the engine temporarily shut down because I need to uh, break into the system here and attach the transmission machine lines uh, to one of the transmission lines that are on the vehicle. So, we're gonna pop this little uh, retainer clip off of there and the E-clip that holds the line to the fitting is encased in the fitting. We're just gonna get behind it with a little pocket screwdriver. Sorry if I'm blocking your field of view here. I gotta, gotta get this clip out. Unconnect that, that's the E-clip. We must not lose that. Now we can remove that trans line from the cooler inside the radiator and use this point here to attach, that's nasty, to attach the, the fittings for the transmission machine. Alrighty, I have the adapters connected to the trans cooler and the transmission line going down to the unit. Let's connect the machine lines up to set adapters. We'll go ahead and start the engine again and allow that cleaner to continue to recirculate and then uh, we'll go ahead and begin the service procedure. Restarting the engine. Right. Alive. We do this service with the trans in neutral. Let's see, we have no leaks here. This is good. Excellent. Let's see what kind of flow we get. Oh, that's nasty. Look at that. There's our old fluid. That's gonna turn the same nasty brown as it, as it uh, circulates a little bit. Should be coming up on pressure here anytime soon. Okay, so it appears that the longer this cleaner is running through this transmission, the nastier this fluid's starting to become. Like you guys see that? That's that's about as black as motor oil. That's that's pretty nasty. Our line pressure is good. We're gonna let this uh, run through a little bit longer. In the meantime, let's go ahead and lift this thing up some. I want to check on that uh, wheel seal leak issue that uh, that the guy mentioned. I think it's the right rear that's leaking. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, it's the right rear that's leaking. Oh my goodness, that's that's leaking everywhere. It's not okay. All right, we're rolling around circumnavigating the truck here. Let's get off to our leaking right rear wheel. Pull these lug nuts off. Pull the wheel off and see what's going on back there. Uh, check this out. Shine a little bit of light on the subject. We've got gear oil all over the wheel well back here. It's on the leaf spring. It's everywhere. We're, we have a major leak, very major leak. Oh no. Yeah, look at that. Inside of the wheel, that's covered in it. Okay, we need to figure out what the, what the situation is here. This is not okay. Okay, let's just throw some paper towels down on it. That'll absorb all of our leakages. All right, so here's what I'm gonna check first. I'm gonna make sure that this bearing pack inside of this hub is seated all the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unbolt this floating axle. We're gonna pull this axle out of the tube and we're gonna check that end nut to make sure it's uh, all the way tight and fully seated. So let's pull these guys out. These are all 19 mil. The trans machine is uh, still circulating cleaner, which is good. We'll go ahead and switch it over in a moment and uh, begin that process. But first I wanna make sure that we can seal this up right here. Okay, the axle's out. Now if you remember from the last video where I worked on one of these, we've got the big threaded portion of the axle right here. There's a retainer clip, the big nut, then there's that pin that keeps the nut from spinning around. We need to go in there with some uh, uh, like a pocket screwdriver and start disassembling this stuff. So the first thing we need to do is get this little retainer guy out of here. It's just a little clip. See that? We'll set that aside. And then we need this little piece of square steel in there, that little pin. See how it rides inside that little groove? Get some more light in it. Yeah, it rides in that little groove right there. And since that pin uh, captures the ring, the retaining nut, that means the nut can't turn and loosen or tighten. Uh, there's a chance that it's not as tight as it should be and that the rear seal in the back just hasn't fully seated and now it, uh, it it's just flopping around and it's leaking back there so we're going to try to tighten this up some and then oh yeah yeah look at that nope 
Yeah, see that? We're, we're too loose. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna try to tighten that up a little bit and we'll re-secure it and see if it, uh, if, it, if it stops the leak or not. If not, uh, we're gonna have to take this apart and then throw a new, uh, new seal back there in the, the back of that hub. But we'll see. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, just go in here with a screwdriver. We're gonna tighten down this locking nut pretty much as tight as I can get it. Finish it off with a chisel. There, there are sockets if you run these nuts. Uh, I don't have any. I don't really do enough of these to justify the ginormous set of sockets when this method works just fine. Okay, let's give it some wiggle action here. The clearance is a little bit better. That's also kind of tight. Let's go a little tighter and then we can back it off. I want to make sure that that bearing and that seal are seated all the way. Yeah, it's still going in. Still going. Okay, so I think we're pretty close. I'm gonna give this some taps with the, uh, the dead blow mallet just to try to finish off. Finish it off and make sure it's seated all the way. Again, rubber, not metal. Yep, see, it went in a little bit farther. See that? We'll just keep doing this until I think it's fully seated. That's good. There we go. Okay, that feels pretty good. One more time. Yep, we're good here. So let's go ahead and back it off. I think spec calls for one to five thousandths of a uh, in play in the hub. Pretty sure that's at least one thou right there. Yep, turns pretty good. It's free. It's not binding. Let's go ahead and put our little pin back in. That's going to uh, keep that uh, lock ring from moving around. See, as we drive, that could actually become loose. So without that little piece of a uh, little square stock piece of metal in there, then the wheels will unthread themselves and fall off. And that would not be okay. All right, that's looking good so far. Now we need to clean off all the soil. All right, time to initiate maximum shiny. Everything is oil soaked, including the brake pads. We don't want this. Get behind the rotor, inside of the rotor, all around the rotor. Behind the pads, in the piston, everything, clean it all. I'm running low, another. go. Here we can clean off the springs too while we're at it. All of it. Clean the frame off, the wheel well. That's good. Alright, let's let that dry for a little while. We can head over here to the trans machine and begin the process. You see our fluid's just as nasty as ever. 
pressures are still good. Beginning process now. So at this point, the vehicle is pumping old trans fluid into the machine, into two-stage bladder tank. The tank already has new fluid in it, and as it's pumping in the old fluid, it's pumping new fluid straight into the transmission. So we're gonna get the most complete fluid exchange as possible. Hooray! Okay, we're about ready to put the uh, axle shaft back in, but I need to get away or clean off all this uh, sealant that's in here on the ceiling surface for the axle. That way it doesn't leak on the outside. It was leaking on the inside, but if I don't clean this off, it'll leak on the outside and that would not be okay. So let's get rid of all that sealant right there, wipe that away. Then we can apply new sealant and then get this axle shaft reinstalled, bolted in, and then we'll refill the dip and this should be good to go. Should be. I mean, it could have damaged the seal in the back of the hub, in which case it'll have to be replaced, but at least now we know it's, it's seated fully. There we go. And I'm just gonna come in with a little tube of room temperature vulcanizing sealant. It's RTV. Put a little bead around the surface here. There are gaskets uh, for this application, but I don't have any. And RTV works just fine. All we're doing is keeping gear oil in. Let's go full overkill and do some on the outside of the bolt holes as well. It's kind of not necessary, but I just can't. I just can't deny it, just can't do it. There we go. Okay, sealant is applied, shaft coming in. Insert dead center. Oh, bottomed out. Got to change our angle here. Pick up on it, rotate it some. It'll go in the rest of the way. Now what I want to do is get a couple bolts started before the flange meets and crushes the silicone. As you can see, there's some play here and we don't want that to flop around and smear the sealant past the uh, areas of bolt holes. So let's get all these guys in. Four will be sufficient to begin with. Don't smash your finger in that little, little groove. Clicks, twice, thrice, four clicks and it is now seated. We can get the rest of these guys in. I believe this will be a success, but we're gonna have to test drive it to confirm. Bolt these down, and we'll check the status of the transmission next. Status, state status. That's good. Okay, off to the transmission machine. Let's recheck this guy. We're still flowing. Our used fluid is starting to get clean. We do not have a pressure differential yet, so the machine is still processing. That's good. That gives us time to go ahead and clean up this mess over here, toss the wheel back on, and then we'll scooch down below and pump a little bit of fluid into this thing. Goodbye, drain pan. We don't need that. Or that, or that, or that out of here. Wheel coming in. Oh, a big old wheel too. Up on the foot, up on two feet. There we go. Slide that on. Now we can screw in the nuts. Okay, lug nuts coming in. These are 7 8 or 22 millimeter. guys on. Oh no, there's sealant on me. Gross. Give it back. There we go. Hate this gun. Okay, torque goes later. 
Let's go check the machine again. I think it should be complete. And the survey says 20 PSI and 10 PSI. We have a pressure differential. Let's go ahead and shut off the valve. This thing's good to go. Let's shut the truck down, disconnect our machine. Then we can check fluid level on the trans and out back at the differential. Climbing on up, raw. Shutting down. Pew. So what do we do? Do we go up to check the diff first or we do go down to do the trans fluid first? Um, up or down, up or down. I think we should go down. Down works. Off the lot. All the way down. There we go. Okay, let us disconnect the machine. We can plug in our uh, hot, our cooler lines. Put that over there. That's our conditioner. We'll save that for later. Let's pull the adapters and whatnot off of this thing. That's a little warm. Maybe I should have waited and did the rear. But you guys know I have no patience, so nah. Let's get rid of that one. Pull out my paper clip retainer. Come here. I use this in lieu of the E-clip. That way I don't have to manipulate the E-clip more than once. It saves time and effort, which is good. Now I just need to take this trans line, plug that back into the cooler, which is integrated into the radiator. That's in. And then reach in here and get this E-clip reinstalled without losing it. There we go, that's on. And of course the uh, little plastic retainer, good to go. Okay, now we can go ahead, throw our conditioner into the trans, dump that stuff in. Goodbye conditioner. Oh, don't do that, stay. Stay up here. Okay, now while that's draining down in there, let's run the truck up in the air and we'll check that rear diff, act, diff fluid level and then go from there. Moving back up, smash subscribe button. That's what we do here. Okay, me thinks that is good. Let's see if this thing has a, where the fill plug is. Okay, it's not on the diff. That means that the fill plug is hmm, under some dirt. Where are you, Phil? Oh, there it is, right there on the side. Okay, we need a 3 8 racket. Good. All right, coming in to the diff fill plug. Let's get this thing unthreaded, removed. This also sets the, uh, the fill level. So when I fill this up, I'm just gonna fill it till it drains out. Uh, once it drains out, that's how you know it's full. Okay, stick that in there. Give this thing a couple pumps. It's kind of empty. Hope I got it out. Come on. Am I out? Oh no, I'm fresh out. Seriously? Like, I feel like there's some in there. It's not okay. But here, let's just see. Let's just see what's left in there. And survey says, not enough for the pump to pick up. Okay, need a new drum. Aha, and a new drum. We have nice shiny oil. Okay, let's do the transfer. There we go. And now, I'm not gonna let that go to waste. Let's dump that in there too. Okay, you get on top of the bucket. Get on there. Why is this so not easy to do. I think putting a lid on something wouldn't be that hard, but it is. Oh well, regardless, let's get this thing refilled. I can screw with this bucket later. Beginning pumping now. There it goes, that's doing. Up, up, and away. I'm curious to how low this differential really is. Like 10, 15 pumps. Still going. Still pumping. 
Oh, there we go. We've got our overflow going. Let's give it some more. There. Come here, nozzle. All right, we'll hang this up for now. That way all the oil can drain back through the tube. And now I can get the fill plug reinstalled. Wipe that off a little bit. It was on the floor. Put that guy back in and we should be all set here. Click. All right, Silverado coming down off the locks. All the way down, here we go. Okay, dokes, let's clear the rack, restart the engine. We'll check trans fluid level, then we'll take this thing back over the bridge one more time, make sure it still sh uh, shifts. Then we're gonna come back and reinspect this axle seal for that leak. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. Re-beginning engine starting sequence now. There we go. Coming around, let's pull the funnel, check our dipping sticks, and uh, see what our fluid level looks like. Right, dipstick coming in, all the way down. There we go. And the survey says, hmm, it's a little low. We're not on the dipstick just yet. Back to the funnel, let's add some more. There we go. We'll let that settle and recheck in a moment. Okay, I've given the trans fluid level time to stabilize after the extra quart refill. Let's check it one more time here. And survey says, oh, we're a little high actually. I put a little too much in there. Let me, uh, let me stick a vacuum in that hole and we'll suction some of it out. Too much. No worries, we can bring it down. First it was too high, then it was too low. At first it was too low, then it's too high. Feed that guy down in the hole there. We'll start to see fluid coming through. A little more, a little more. There it is. Okay, we'll let that go for a second and then recheck. Oh, here's the machine. It's a vacuum tank with a Venturi valve on it. You hook stop air to it, it blows through, passes out of the diffuser and creates a negative pressure on the inside of the tank. I think that's good. Let's check her again. Pull this back out. That's hot. Slightly warm. Hot. Okay, we're clean. Dipping it in. All the way to the bottom there. There we go. Ah, much more better right here in the middle that's good that's what we want okie doke all right guys we're good to go here let's go and uh revisit that dripping leak that we had back here in the corner which uh i do not see the drips this is good let's shut down the vacuum machine close up the hood and we'll go out for one more test drive all right hood coming down the rack is cleared let's back her out and hit the road all right climbing back in AC's nice and cold, this is good. I like the cold AC. Backing out the auto, pumps for safety. Checking the mirrors, clearancing the mirrors. We're good to go here, backing her up. I see you. Actually, I'm aware, I know, I, I know it's a joke. It's a joke, guys. Well, it's got reverse, that's good. 
long as it's got the other four gears, we're in good shape here. And we have forward, yay. All right, rolling out, we have first gear, second gear, good, accelerating. Third gear right there, good, nice. Can't check fourth yet, we have to turn, but we will. All right, here we go, up over the bridge. More steam. We're not gonna touch fourth on the way up, but we'll catch it on the way back down, no worries. There's our third gear shift. Hello, shop parking lot. All right, we're good, there's our fourth gear shift. We're now in overdrive. Okay, it has all the gears. Fluid level's clean. It's full at its max mark. We've got some conditioner in there. We got rid of all the varnish and the nasty. We need to go back to the shop, recheck the right rear axle seal leak, make sure that that thing is no longer dumping out differential oil, and then this truck should be good to go. All right guys, we're back at the shop. Let's hop on out, check that right rear for fluid leakages, and then we will go from there, I suppose. Unlock, uh-oh. Oh, that's locked, hang on. It was bass backwards. Again, circumnavigating the Chevrolet. Let's take a look down here. Uh, that's not fluid from this, that's from the, the swamp cooler over there. Uh, coming back, back down below, I don't see anything dripping. The wheel, which has been washed off, is not covered in fluid. Brake caliper is not covered in fluid. I think this is good to go considering what we saw versus what we have now. There's no longer a pool of oil puddling out from under this. So that's been successfully repaired. Uh, I'll have to have him recheck this after a, a couple hundred miles of driving just to make sure and maybe go in there with some more cleaner to get rid of uh, some of that real, some of the other residuals words. So that being said, I have nothing more to offer you on this particular truck today. So therefore I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out right now. I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you for watching this video. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. Drop me a comment or two while you're down there. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later in a video, in a Chevrolet, in a transmission, in a day. <laughs>